Welcome everybody and thank you for attending this presentation. The aim of the following slides is to present the new steps in the unreliable IC verification means, also called the digital packer speed and their associated monitoring and displays on AT20 family and AT30 aircraft. So first of all, I will provide you with an overview of the unreliable airspeed mitigation means and remind you the first step, also known as the reversible bus. Then I will show you the newer step called the digital backup speed and I will use two fair scenarios to illustrate the benefits of this function. Finally, I will do the synthesis. So we can take a look at the overview. As you may know, the unreliable airspeed mitigation means is an Airbus multi-system function applicable to AT20 family and AT30 aircraft. Its objective is to enhance safety by helping the pilots to detect invalid speed information and select the relevant ones through dedicated ECAM procedures. This function includes two steps. The first step corresponds to the reversible backup speed scale, also known as reversible bus. This capability is available on AT20 family and AT30 or AT40 aircraft since 2016. Let me remind you that the reversible bus provides the capability to select and display the bus on each side in reversible manner via dedicated push buttons. When you press the backup speed altitude push button, the backup speed scale appears with green band as an alternate speed information without setting all ADRs to off. Reversible bus must be used below flight level 250 when you consider situation of unreliable airspeed indication. Let's focus more on second step, the subject of this presentation. The new monitoring gives information on the validity of the ADR speeds. Consequently, some flag identifying the ARINUS ADR speed. Then, new or modified ECAM procedures provide the appropriate ADR switching position. We will see example in the upcoming slides. And a dedicated display and computation of the digital backup speed independent of anemometry data is now available. The digital backup speed is computed based on the left equation based on the anchor normal attack transmitted by IRS, aircraft weight and load factor. Here is the HADA display and PFD with the digital backup speed. As you can see, a new label backup speed appears at the bottom of the speed scale when the digital backup speed is displayed. Then the last digit of the speed is that you may wonder why. In fact, the digital backup speed has a flight domain validity between VLS and 280 knots 0.82 mark on AT30 or 280 knots 0.78 mark on AT20. Thus, the max speed is limited to ensure 10 to 15 knots accuracy compared to ADR X speeds. Same concern for the backup mark to show that the information is less accurate. Regarding the altitude, the label GPS altitude appears when the barrel altitude is no longer used and replaced by GPS altitude. Finally, the last digit of the altitudes are that since GPS altitude is less accurate than barrel altitude. Now, let me provide you with two scenarios of failures to illustrate the behavior and displays associated to this new monitoring. These scenarios are very remote ones, but the idea is to present you with the worst cases scenarios and the associated behavior. First one, consider the successive icing conditions on the three feeder probe leading to ADR speeds faulty, then the icing condition. So during the flight, icing conditions are encountered leading to ADR2 speed detected as faulty. Speed metrics appears with a new NAV and speed state change ECAM alert. PFD2 is flagged as usual in this case. The associated action is proposed on the ECAM. In this case, switching the air data selector to FO on 3. PFD2 recovers reliable data from ADR3. But now, ADR1 speed becomes faulty. Note that two ADRs are faulty. Therefore, protections are lost and reversion to alternate law occurs as usual in this type of case. ECAM alerts is triggered again and new actions are recommended. Here, you will use the backup speed attitude push button on the captain's side. Consequently, max speed is limited. 
the PXD1 display recovers with the backup speed. Note also that there is no more consideration of the flight level 250 when using the digital backup speed. Monitoring are reversible and no more need to switch off ADRs. Then ADR tree speed becomes 40. So only backup speed is reliable. Note that the standby speed is declared uncertain when ADR tree speed is 40. Since the same pitot probe is used by both circuits, standby speed is not monitored but main cause of speed error being pitot malfunction. Link is done between both sources status. Now, action is to use backup speed order to push button on F4 side to recover speed on side 2. This way, three ADR speeds are 40 but the first source is reliable. Note that you can make link to transponder to set altitude reporting to off to avoid the use of air news ADR data by transponder or TCAS EGPWS. Now, the frozen pitot probe de-ice and ADR tree speed becomes available again. Since backup speed is reliable, ADR tree speed can be consolidated and checked consistent with the digital backup speed, so ADR tree speed can be reliable again and used by Aeronic system. Accordingly, ECAM action requests to set the backup speed attitude push buttons to off and PFD2 recovers ADR data. Then ADR1 speed becomes available again and consolidated with the digital backup speed. ADR1 is recovered also and backup speed attitude push button set to off and recovers ADR data on PFD1. In this case, autopilot and auto thrust engagement can be considered Two ADRs are now consistent with digital backup speed, so autopilot and auto thrust may be used again. Finally, ADR2 speed becomes available and liable again. So ECAM recommends to set air data selector to none. The second scenario considers a 40 backup speed combined with successive icing conditions on three pitot probes. So during the flight, the backup speed becomes 40. It may occur if one parameter required to compute backup speed is not available, such as load factor, weight, or anchor number tag. Then, ADR3 becomes 40. No impact on aircraft behavior. But ADR1 becomes 40. PFD1 is flagged, as usual in this case. I will not detail the action, since similar to the previous example. Let's focus on this 60 seconds confirmation time. Since ADR1 and 3 are declared 40 by comparison with our consolidation with backup speed, their status change into uncertain. As long as backup speed is 40, no 40 ADR speed can be displayed as reliable again on the speed metric. So instead of being flagged, the PFD1 recovers the data from ADR1 to use available data. If ADR1 becomes consistent with ADR2, data may be used by flight crew. Then ADR2 speed fault and a new red ECAM alert nap or speed uncertain is triggered. In such case, unreliable air speed indication procedures must be applied. So now we will see the next step and conclusion. Finally, just a few words about the next step. I will not develop this step free since it is still understudy, but the goal is to reach a design similar to AT51. In other words, the pressure measurements coming from NEO engines will be used in combination with anchor number tag information to compute the backup speed. To conclude, I would say that in the case of early new speed or unreliable air speed indication situation, the digital backup speed and the associated new monitoring will enhance the crew awareness. You have seen the speed metrics that clearly identify the reliable speed information. It will alleviate crew workload, regardless of the altitude, less troubleshooting by flight crew, and it can procedures with appropriate actions to perform. It will ease the manual flying in such condition compared to the backup speed scale. It is a bit more comfortable for pilot to fly at speed instead of a green band associated to an anchor number tag or pitch and trust tables. Hope you will enjoy this safety enhancement in the upcoming months and thank you for your time.